start again that whole thought. Okay. Obama in Obama's first election, he lost. He no, he he beat the first time he won. It was by using a technicality to get his opponent taken off the ballot, which was was considered shockingly ruthless and sneaky at the time. But he wasn't done yet. The next person he beat to to get a higher office, what happened was the poor son of a bitch had gotten a divorce and somehow his his private secret divorce papers were released to the public by a Chicago newspaper showing that uh, he and his wife had discussed going to a sex club and that was why how Obama beat him now wait is this the one who was married to Jerry Ryan I don't remember Star Trek fan uh, I, I, don't, I don't remember my point is is that He's he's also another thing. Well, no. Well, then we have to break. We wait, have to look it up. Not, wait, we're talking about Jerry. Ryan. I don't think it matters because no, I'm making seven of nine. She was one of the board. Yeah, that's fascinating. But you're no, it was important because it's really no. It's <coughs> okay. The, another thing that, that another thing that he did was um, Obama uh, had. Okay, now I forgot what I was going to say because you successfully derailed me. No, because no, but it's an exciting freaking story with Jerry Jerry Ryan, seven of nine, the Borg, whose who's scumbag husband. Oh, did I, one. Uh, oh, I know. He um, he had uh, secretly uh, gone and met with Farrakhan, and there was a photograph of Obama with Farrakhan. And uh, he had to, somehow the press protected him and hid the photograph uh, because uh, most Jews would not have voted for Obama if they had known that he was secretly meeting with Farrakhan. Is there a? Can we find the photograph now? Or now we still? can. Yeah, yeah, we can now. But they, the, but Obama secretly did that so he could keep the image that fooled you. All right, so I need so, a break. So he did these three things in the very beginning. We know all those things. So, now, now there's more. You can put your arms down, because I have something to say now. You had a long time to say okay, shit. Okay, okay, okay. Um, it turns out that this week, this week, a fellow named, uh, I think his last name is Warren. Uh, there was a, uh, an FBI informant I'll have to look up his name. I remembered it before you started talking about Seven of Nine from Star Trek. Uh, this fella was embedded in 2006 into the Russian uranium industry by American intelligence. And the reason he was uh, embedded was because the uh, American intelligence believed, and, and he confirmed, that Putin was trying to take over the uranium market in the world. And so they embedded this guy in 2006. Now, this informant found that Putin was, uh, that the, the, inter the uranium industry in Russia was bribing American officials. And in uh, 2010, he, uh, he was frantically trying to tell his handlers, do not make a deal with Putin because they're trying to steal the world's uranium. And uh, just as he was doing that, Hillary Clinton you know the signed, whole uranium signed the deal. Debunked. No, no, listen, I know you always say that. Now, just listen to me. Don't interrupt. Don't interrupt. In 2010, Hillary Clinton signed a deal with Uranium One, given no, the United didn't. States. She did not. She, she approved she didn't. the deal. She, she didn't approve, approve the deal. Her signature is on it, and we no, found it. No, you showed me the. You showed me the signature. You showed me a signature on yeah, a document. Yeah. I said, show me a, a signature on a document pertaining to uranium. Yeah. You showed me a signature on a document pertaining, pertaining to plutonium, plutonium and okay. then you tried to convince me that plutonium okay. and uranium Red, are the Red, same fucking Red, thing, Red, and they're you not. You said you wouldn't interrupt me. Yeah, but you, you, you said you wouldn't interrupt me. 
You present no, no, as fact. Yeah. A lot of Then like, wait till I'm done. All right, fine. Okay. According to this informant, in 2010, Hillary Clinton signed over the rights to 20% of the U.S.'s uranium against all previous U.S. policy. And she did this as the head of, as the final say of several federal agencies. Now, the Justice Department under Obama put a gag order on him by court that he would be put in jail if he told anybody what he knew. Interestingly, this week, that man is going to, uh, was, is announced, is going to speak to Congress. And what he's going to say to Congress is that should we Hillary, wait till next week to to I, I said I don't he's going know I don't know the congressional hearing schedule but I know what he's going to say because I heard him interview this week He's going by to who? say by Fox He's going to say he is going to say that Hillary Clinton was responsible for Russia taking over our uranium reserves and that it was because of bribery. That's what he's going to say. Now, uh, this hasn't happened yet, so you can tell me that I'm making it all up, but the hearings yeah, I'm will be this I'm going to say you're month. making it all up. Okay, this person is going to be speaking before Congress because he is a member of our intelligence. They don't have just a crazy guy talk to them. And I already know what he's going to say. He's going to say that Clinton sold out our country. Yeah, but this whole thing, you're presenting it as fact, and it's been largely debunked. No, now, it hasn't been debunked. But you, in fact, all this stuff you present, you, you often, and no, I no, often no, I get... I don't know how this was debunked. We can take a how break and I can... How Shall I show you the interview that this man gave to him? We Hannity? should. We'll break in a Do second. Do you want to see the interview? Yeah, but first I want to say one thing, which is, you talked about how Obama won a, a, a campaign against a guy whose divorce records were revealed. Yes. Now, I remember this whole deal. Okay. I didn't remember that this Obama was involved, but the deal is that Jerry Ryan, as I've said... Now, I don't watch Star Trek, but I know enough to know that she was she's a she was a super hot actor who wore skin tight shit plus a lot of shit on her face because she was like half robot on Star Trek, but she was she was um, a super hot half robot that a lot of, of lonely guys beat off to, and she was married to this scumbag politician who wanted her to go to sex clubs or. And I have sex with her and have sex with him in public. That would have given him an extra special boner. And she decided that her husband was an, a scumbag, and she divorced him. Now you're saying that somehow, without any proof, Obama is the one who got a hold of this information and released it. That's how he got elected. Well, that was probably a component that went, that. I'm saying no, no. Hold on. Come. That this guy being revealed that he was married to this super hot woman and he's, that wasn't good enough, he still had, wanted to have sex with her in public, yeah, the, the people thinking he was a scumbag probably lost him some votes. But there's no evidence that Obama is the one who dug up this, the information and used it. And, and if you use Just common sense, if you use fucking common sense, the smoking gun... The, the website that specializes in digging up scandal, they're the ones, I think, who revealed it, or some similar website. And, of course, there'd be vast public interest. It was the Chicago Tribune. Okay, Chicago Tribune. But, of course, people would want to know that because super hot Star Trek actress that a lot of people beat off to. All right, let's look it up because I don't remember the Star Trek Plants. actress. I think you're making this up. No, fucking... I don't. I don't right, remember. Anyway, I don't right, 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 right. Do you want to just uh, tell us what your opinion is at right now? Uh, I'm just darkening the darks and adding shadows. Okay. All right. So let's look that up. Okay. 
He should also look up how to get visiting hours after 10 o'clock at a hot at UCLA. All right, 105.2. This is Jerry Ryan wearing a rubber dress, a tight rubber dress. Okay. Now we're rolling? We're still uh, rolling again. All right. Point. Jerry Ryan wearing a tight rubber dress. This is the actor who is married to the scumbag Come politician. Close, yeah. Come right, that's perfect. Um, who tried to take her to sex clubs so they could have sex in public. The revelation of which effed up um, this Jack Ryan's career. Not Jack Ryan, the Tom Clancy character, but Jack Ryan, who was married to this lady. And then the Chicago Tribune and, and a Chicago TV station found out about it, and they revealed it. And you know, Lance said that this was Obama's doing. I claim that anybody would want to find out and have a story involving this pretty lady in her rubber dress being forced by her scumbag hus husband to have sex in front of other people in a Paris sex club. And when he tried to get her to do that, she divorced him. So it wasn't an Obama conspiracy. It was... Okay. All right, 105, 2.1, so I don't know what the fuck. Um, all right, pretty lady, rubber dress, sex club. Not Obama's fault that somebody reported on it. Yeah, it's it's not Obama. It is, it is just a strange coincidence that he was running against Obama when this happened. Yeah, but yeah, so I mean, it was, it's, a, it was it, they had no right to get these divorce proceedings. They were sealed. And yeah, so, and then and then they, they no, they were leaked to the to Chicago by Obama's corrupt friends. No, they no, they were to the no, no, that's, you have, you have no right, proof of that, right, right. and it was, the Chicago Tribune wanted to find it out because it's newsworthy, because she's, because she was, she's, she's, all right, so, I don't know, we, I don't know, if the, we were having tech issues for a little bit, but anyway, you're claiming that Obama revealed the, the sex story, somehow found out about it, as opposed to newspaper reporters who dug it up, that, that Obama is the secret conspirator in the story of the pretty lady in the rubber dress. Okay. You got no and proof of that. And really, common sense I, says I, newspapers like to dig up stuff like this without the help of Obama. And he just, he just happened to benefit from it and get elected against this guy. He also, um, he also, the press hid a photograph of him meeting with Farrakhan. Oh, should we find that photo? Yeah, let's find it. Turn the camera off. Do you want to do Science Corner while he does that? Uh, all right, okay. What, what, what were we talking about, Science? Oh, conservative, you were asking me about time travel. Like, what happens if you go back and kill Hitler? And it's 2019. And if you go back to... 1932 and kill Hitler, you don't just kill Hitler you obliterate 99% of the people who are alive today because you've changed the past and you can't guarantee that every time people have sex for the next 87 years that the same chromosomes get together. The same sperm hooks up with the same eggs. Egg, you know, it, it, it's not gonna happen so if you change the past in 1932, according to one view of time travel, and really any view of time travel, they're all questionable since time travel isn't possible. All right, 105.3, time travel. So if you change the past in 1932, anybody, anybody born after 1933 or so is going to be a different person from the people who were actually born after 1933 because you've changed everything. However, there's a more reasonable view of how time travel should work, which is you go back, you change the past in 1932, and you create two separate timelines. One timeline two starts in 1932 and plays out with a whole different set of people by the time you get to 2019. Meanwhile, our timeline continues to exist, and if you've done your time travel job right, you've built a portal from the, the new timeline to our world, that portal travels forward at the same speed between the two worlds. So 
Right now, you can go back and forth between 2019 and, and 1932, a year from now between 2020 and 1933, but, and people can travel back and forth, and you have 105.4 or something. So anyway, that's a better way to have time travel work, that you've got a connection between 2019, unfucked with timeline, and 2032, where you've killed Hitler. And then just both timelines move together in parallel into the future. And you've got a gateway, which is nice because you can work in 2019 and make you know, 80 grand a year, and then you can go through the gateway and live in 2032 with a house and a car, where you know, a house might cost you uh, 2,500 bucks, a car might cost you 1,500 bucks, and it's nice. Anyway, that's conservative time travel, where you don't wipe out entire timelines, you just create new alternative timelines every time you mess with the past. So you're gonna be having surgery. Okay, yeah. Surgery in two and a half days from now, they're gonna take a three centimeter, roughly, tumor out of my kidney. Um, Going to try to sneak these guys into the hospital so we can do a hospital episode. Uh, then they're going to do a pathology report to find out whether it's, it's well-behaved cancer or unruly cancer, which will determine you know, whether I get follow-up drugs to slow it down or wipe out any possible metastases. So, Though the statistics for the size of thing I have are really good. So knock on wood. Okay, Lance. All right, so here's a picture of Obama with Farrakhan. And Nation of Islam. Yeah, I think, Louis yeah, Farrakhan. Nation of Islam and considered one of the greatest anti-Semites, uh, Jew haters in the United States. So Obama's meeting with him in this photograph. Now, the photographer suppressed the photograph until Obama was long out of office. If this photograph had been released, he undoubtedly would have lost a tremendous amount of Jewish support in the 2008 election. So Obama is not as slick and marvelous and wonderful as we think. As, as Rick thinks. Well, uh, and I, I, all right, I read four articles on the, the, the picture. Yes. And the photographer himself uh, felt disquiet about having taken the picture and was afraid himself that it would harm Obama. Yeah. And he, then he got a call from the CBC, the Congressional Black Caucus, saying, you know, can you not publish that picture? So... And so he agreed not to until he came out with a book 13 years later in 2018. Um, so yeah, there was a picture of Obama and Farrakhan taken in 2005. The picture was suppressed. Now whether Obama did the suppressing, you like to assume that he's this big conspirator um, and that he was behind the, the suppression. Well, no, actually, I don't give a shit whether he suppressed himself or not. My point is, is that Jews don't like Farrakhan because he hates our guts mm -hmm. and has said many anti-Semitic things. And any, uh, any uh, Obama, any politician that would meet with him would lose a tremendous amount of Jewish support. He didn't lose your support, of course, Rick, because you don't give a shit. You'd rather vote for a guy uh, because he's, uh, he looks good in a suit then uh, in spite of the fact that he meets with anti-Semites. Did he meet with Farrakhan, or was there a public gathering of the I, congressional I black? Rick. I don't care, Rick. The point is, is that the photograph is of your oily, two-faced, uh, dis, uh, disgusting leader, Obama, meeting with a guy that wants me dead. And all other Jews. That that's the thing that I that right, I. So Farrakhan's a, a bad guy, or, or bad for the Jews. Yes, yes, he is. Yeah. Rick, and it doesn't bother. And there was a picture. It doesn't bother you that Obama met with him. 
I don't know that he met with him. I know that so he posed. We're, we're going to split hairs, right? We are going to split hairs because it's a well, meeting. Would, would, if there was a, would, would, it's if, a meeting of the Congress. If there was a Trump meeting with uh, David Duke, Duke, with Duke David. Would, would you say that was a damning thing for Trump? It wouldn't look good, would it? Now, if he was standing next to next to David Duke with a big smile, like in this photograph, it would look bad. Okay, so is your guy Obama really wonderful because he looks good in a suit? I want to know more about the meat. Well, why do you need to know? One hundred five point five. We're having battery problems. Anyway, we were finishing up on Obama and Farrakhan in two thousand five. Uh, Farrakhan speaks to the Congressional Black Caucus. Now, I don't know, that seems ill-advised, since Farrakhan is anti-Semitic. But Obama was a member of the Black Caucus, he posed with Farrakhan. The photographer was nervous because he thought Obama might run for president someday. The, the Congressional Black Caucus was nervous and they agreed to suppress the photo. I'm, I don't know if Obama had anything to do with it or not, but yeah, Obama posed with the guy. Yeah. Can I? Okay, and my point is simply that you started off saying that you thought Obama had this charming style about him, and frankly, nothing you've said about Trump is as uh, damning as a guy posing with a guy. As a guy posing with somebody that hates Jews. Yeah. Now, we Sorry. Don't, Rick. Okay. Well, one question is: Sorry, did, I, o I, I, did Obama know? Farrakhan's stance. I assume, maybe I I guess Rick, it's his well known. Was well known in okay. 2005. All right, then he fucked up and he posed with a guy who's yeah he fucked up. Okay. All right, now but all then right. all right well, now uranium uh, one because we're talking about time. uranium one. So it turns out uh, that the art that the the informant uh, Mr. Campbell actually did speak to Congress a year ago. My information was a year old. 16 months ago, February. Okay. And uh, now, now, but but it turns out that the reason I was watching it was because it came up again on my YouTube feed. And the reason it came up again is because Bill Barr, uh, the Attorney General now, is looking into it. So, uh, one, Bill Barr has, uh, is now officially investigating Comey, Obama's, uh, Obama's uh, FBI chief and the, and the chief accuser of Trump. And he's now being investigated by Bill Barr and the Uranium One scandal that Rick claims is just completely debunked is going to come up again because Bill Barr thinks it's important yeah, you know, to Bill revisit Barr, that issue. Sometimes you can, as I've been saying, the, the, my theme of this week's show is sometimes you can judge a book by the cover. Uh -huh. Bill Barr was known as Mr. Cover-Up when he worked for the uh, George W. Bush administration. Um, and he's now toting Trump's water. And he's going to re- litigate every possible thing, even if it's been debunked. And so he's bringing so up an investigation that's been, that nothing happened 16 months ago when this informant testified before Congress uh -huh. and was found to be not incredibly credible. Well, the, the FBI thought he was credible because he... They paid him 50 grand for yeah, his work. Yeah, so, so he was as credible... But nothing happened. He was as credible as any other FBI informant is. But so, why didn't anything happen in the subsequent 16 <laughs> well, it, months? Well, because we had uh, Jeff Sessions as Attorney General, and he was a peculiar and incompetent man. Uh, Bill Barr is going to investigate your any one. So, so I... I would like to say, yeah, my information is a year and a half old, but it's going to come back. That's all I have to say. Okay. What's we right. got a few Can more we minutes? Be done now? Uh, are we done? Or I think we're we done. Got, we got a little bit. Of, I'd like a you two throw minutes. one more thing for two minutes. Okay. After. What? what? Oh, um, the um, uh, oh, Bojack Horseman. Watch fucking Bojack Horseman on in, on uh, Netflix. Trump got a good haircut. Oh, Trump changed his hair. His hair is. He's gone from the, the triple kind of comb over where he separates it into three parts. One, two, three, two. He looks like he's combing it all back, kind of like I do, which is a deal when your hair's thinning, 
grow it long, and then you just kind of stack it up, and it gives the illusion of density. Somewhat. Lance likes it, I think. No, it I looks just, a lot better. I was just going to say that, that the one thing that was going to prevent me from voting for Trump, he's taken care of now. The hair, the hair did bother me, and now, now my love for him is completely without any reservation because of the new hairstyle. I gotta say, I, he looks natural. He looks dignified. Uh, he, he, and, and now you can't even say that he's not stylish. He looks like a handsome older man. Yeah, I, I wouldn't say he looks handsome, but and he I'm looks voting, better. I'm voting for him because of his style now, as he, well as his policy. He should say that this will save him 15 minutes of hairstyling a day, which he can use for the American people. Very good. Um, it's Pride Month. Do you want to comment on that? It's, uh, it's just... Tell us what Pride Month is. It's, it's Gay Pride Month. It's for every variety of, of, of sexual preference. So, thumbs up, everybody. And I gotta say that um, 15 years ago, um, I dressed up as a giant penis and uh, <laughs> ran around the Pride Parade for, for the Man Show, because the Man Show had a, a surplus penis costume. And I'm like, hey, let me put it on. <laughs> and run around the pride parade, and it was really fun. Get, get, yeah, that that was season four of the Man Show, where um, there was, you know, editorial control was slightly relaxed at that point. And so, anything gives me an opportunity to dress like a giant dick and <laughs> run amok is is aces with me. Lance, any comments on Pride Month? I'd just like to say that. Um, I understand that for centuries uh, people have tried to make homosexuals embarrassed about their sexual behavior and so I understand that they want to have pride. Personally, I don't think that your sexual behavior is something to take pride in. Uh, what about just and, comfortable with and not be shamed? For? Yeah, I think that's... That, that seems to be a goal here, and as I as I've said frequently, I don't think people should be ashamed of sexual behavior that doesn't hurt anybody. But at the same time, once something becomes a movement, it becomes very dangerous and very belligerent. And so, I'm not that excited about the Pride Day. Well, I I would feel much more comfortable with pride. Well, I'm, I'm comfortable with it now, but I want them to add to LGBTQIA. I want them to add S for people who have a lot of sex with their socks. Our robots. And, oh, and R for robot girlfriends, but they don't need to do that till like 2028. All right. Funny. We left with a joke. I mean, that was that not was a good joke. Professional no. LGBTQS. <laughs> it was funny. It was funny. All right. I mean, look, it's free. Okay. Uh, actually, it is. Donate to Lance versus Rick at oh, gmail .com. Did, did you want to say something about the comment that we got about the? Oh, like with, with, uh, yeah. We asked people for comments and. One guy said, yeah, you guys are old guys who don't know what you're doing with regard to social media, and that is 100% legit. We don't. Um, they said we need a millennial to, to help make us, you know, get us viewers that we title our stuff just Lance vs. Rick. I guess we need to title our show um, Attractive People Having Sex. Um, Maybe somebody can make a suggestion. Uh, we're going to start subtitling our shows Deceptively, uh, Lance versus Rick, um, how to make $500,000 in two months. Lance versus Rick, um, uh, all right, I know, I'm out. And, and also, some guy, I, I, we're very much into helping our customers. So, a Mr. Urchu or something told us that we never respond to his comments anyway. So we could go fuck ourselves or something, and rather than being insulted, now I'm anxious to please Mr. Whatever. Well, no, I mean he Mr. makes a good point. Mr. Urchin. Urchin, Urchin, I think. Urchin. Yeah, we we don't respond to the comments because we don't know how. 
You know, I know how, but I'm lazy as F. He's lazy, and I don't know how. So, uh, Mr. Whatever Your Name Is, if you want us Wait, to answer Wait, I can question, show you how, if you want to... I, no, not right now. If you want us to answer a question, ask us a question in the comments, and we'll answer it. Okay? That goes for anybody else listening to this. And it doesn't have to be about the show. Ask us anything, and we'll take a shot at it. And... By the way, you are the warrior of God. you want to comment on that? Oh, apparently there's a, a Spanish language a movie sl- and a cartoon about a, a schizophrenic old guy who doesn't wear a shirt and who uh, fights people. And so Guerrero de, di- de, de Dios. Guerrero de Dios. De Dios. Say Guerrero. Gu- Guerrero. De. De. Dios. Dios. Warrior of God. Soy yo. Soy yo. Un, Quiero de Dios. Un pendejo. Un pendejo. <laughs> Say pendejo. That's pendejo. a bad thing. <laughs> That's a bad oh, thing. Yeah. I said that to my inner city class and I almost got fired. That's sh- They said it meant my very good friend. <laughs> <laughs> all right, now we're just sticking around. All right, good yeah. night all. Thank you. All right.